Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets. Man, I'm breaking down to bite-sized pieces today. A lot of stuff to go over, so let's jump right in. First up, a strategist who called Bitcoin's biggest crash says he just exited crypto market. Here's why. And it's not only the crypto market, he's out of all the markets all together. And what he's going to say is going to blow your mind also. Tim Draper jumps off of Bitcoin and goes for Bitcoin Cash. A recent tweet has Tim Draper, the billionaire investor, talk about how easy it is to use and buy Bitcoin Cash. Interesting. And finally, there's a brutal blow to miners. Russia's new draft law will ban crypto completely and prohibit miners from receiving rewards. And actually, it's a little bit more tricky than that, and we'll delve right in. And before we jump into the market, I just want to say thanks, everybody, for watching yesterday's video. We were able to donate to Dog as My Co-Pilot, which allows this pilot to take dogs who are in high kill shelters and transport them from one city that has a high kill shelter to areas that have absolutely or very minimal dogs and cats so they can be adopted. So thanks so much, really appreciate it. And we went ahead and donated $50 yesterday. So fantastic. So as time goes on, it's a pretty worthwhile charity. So as we have more people watch the videos, we'll donate more to this fantastic charity. All right, let's jump into today's market, see what's going on. So it is September 4th, it is uh, 12 o'clock, high noon in Texas time. And uh, what do we got? Well, another bloodbath. So Bitcoin, down again, 2.9%. Although I got to tell you yesterday, I think it uh, slipped to like 10.2. So the big thing is that it did actually hold the 10,000 mark. And that to me is a psychological barrier. Uh, other TA people will, will talk about it as a support. But for me, I just think once it slips below 10, uh, anywhere in the nine range, just expect to go all the way to nine, maybe even to eight. So just let you know, that's what I think. Ethereum, unfortunately, also went below the uh, nice 400 range and here we are at 382 but holding up not too bad tethers tether and xrp watch out 25 cents chain link uh still down 10 percent at uh, 1225 and you know what we should really talk about is uh what's up because everything else is down although i will say this polka dot was up pretty big uh, yesterday. It was, I think it was like 620, and it's dropped about 20%. And when Polkadot first came out, I think it was around 293 dollars, somewhere around that. And uh, then it, you know, it rocketed up to six dollars, and people are like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna FOMO in. I'm gonna get in there." And uh, I always think it's best to dollar cost average. And I can just tell you right now, I'm going to increase my my dollar cost average for today because it's at 497. So why wouldn't I buy it now? I think it's gonna go up pretty well. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Thankfully, I didn't dump everything in at the very beginning. Anyhow, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, everything's down, so on and so forth. EOS up 3.7%. Fantastic, don't know why, but hey, here we are. And 13%, what else is up? Wow, 17%. Yearn dot finance, the darling. Uh, down from, I think at the high, it was like 36,000. Now it's at 26, maybe 34,000, somewhere around there. Now at 26,000. Man, that's crazy. Uh, compound down, synthetics, everything's down. OMG network is up 6.3. I'm thankful the OMG is, is uh, stepping in to help out with the Ethereum uh, transaction fees. Hopefully they can do some great things. So I'm really excited about that. And what Ethereum Classic down 10%. Here's the thing about Ethereum Classic. It had a 51% attack. This was the third time in like a very short time frame. And it only goes down 10%. Uh, <laughs> whatever. That is the cryptocurrency market. I, I don't understand. Um, I will say this. Alex Maschioli over at his channel is going to have the director on. And he's already told me he's going to ask her the question of what are you guys doing to actually stave off these 51% attacks and why are you actually still up in the markets uh, as far as what it is. So I'm excited for that one. I'd like to see what uh, she's gonna say. If you don't know, uh, Alex Mascioli has a bunch of uh, you know heavy hitters in the space. I like to watch it because it gives me a peek into what smart money is doing. And he is one of the few people that I actually listen to on a regular basis. In the description of every one of my videos, you can find the YouTubers that I actually recommend. Alex being one of them, Crypto Nobs, Crazy for Cryptos, Unchained with Laura, and Guy from Coin Bureau. Those are pretty much the ones that I listen to a lot. So check that out this weekend because I'm definitely going to watch that. All right, so what else we got? 13%. Uh, I mean, everything's down across the board. Digibytes. 
is up 10%. Congratulations, all the DigiBees uh, for holding on to that. I gotta get some of that. That uh, who knows what uh, what DigiBuy could do? <laughs> who knows? All right, let's uh, let's jump out of here. What I want to do is I want to shake it up a little bit today. I want to start with Q of the day because it's it's a sentiment that I've been uh, feeling as far as what people are saying in the comments section. So let's just jump in the Q of the day and then we'll get to the, today's top stories. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the office for uh, Q of the day. So uh, as you can see, I'm wearing uh, my favorite shirt, <laughs> which uh, Modern Samurai always likes to make fun of me for wearing this shirt, but it's a good looking shirt. It's like a pink or foosh or something like that. Anyhow, uh, so the cue of the day, uh, it really wasn't a specific cue of the day per se, but I was reading all the comments from, from yesterday's video. And if you didn't watch it, uh, we just go over um, the one trillion uh, bonds that have been bought up by uh, the federal government for uh, mortgages and for the real estate market and how that is probably going to collapse in 2021. On top of all the quantitative easing and all the different issues that are coming up, um, you know, someone's got to pay the piper and I think it's going to come due in 2021. So I see it as not a great thing, but um, there wasn't a specific question, but it was like the sentiment or the overall uh, overarching feeling of the actual comments. And one of the comments was, well, should I take everything out and, and or should I, you know, uh, you know, dump a bunch of money in? Or should I just start selling off like crazy because, you know, the big, bad, you know, monstrous thing is going to happen uh, very soon. So what should I do? And the answer is, I don't know what you should do per se, because, you know, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do. And it's the same thing that I talked about yesterday, which is I'm just going to hold and, and let it all go through. But and, you know, see what happens. But the big thing was about dollar cost averaging. And um, I, I keep getting questions about that dollar cost average, probably because there's so many YouTube channels that tell you to, you, you must trade and you must leverage, you know, 50 to hundred X and everything else. And that's fine if you want to do that and listen to those guys and everything else. But, uh, I'm not that guy. I, I just am not that guy. So uh, if you want a dollar cost average and, um, actually constrain some of your, uh, different, uh, costs that you're, you're having at, as far as what you're buying, I think now is, is like the best time to do that. I'm going to tell you why. So, Here's a, here's a prime example from, from me and my screw ups, depending on how you look at it. So I bought XRP <laughs> uh, when it was like super high, like uh, somewhere in the $280, $3 range. I know what you're, you're probably saying, ouch. Well, you're right, because it does suck. It sucks because you bought it like super high and now it is at whatever it's at, 26 cents, 24 cents or something like that. So, um, you know, uh, you look at that and if I sold right now, it would be, you know, a pretty massive uh, loss. And that's okay because, you know, that's what, that's what we signed up for. And actually, if I did sell it, it would be a massive loss and I could take that on my taxes. So it wouldn't be so bad. It would just kind of suck and I'm stubborn. I don't like to do that. But if you, if you buy at a certain price and it's super high, right, and then you have it at super low and you believe in the project, that's, that's the key thing. If you believe in the project, not like you know, like in 50 years it's gonna go up because who cares about that? You're not gonna be alive anyhow. Maybe for your kids, your grandkids, I suppose. But if you believe that, hey, this project is gonna massively go up uh, very soon or, you know, with it, whatever time frame, what you really should do is start to buy even more of that same item. And not you should do that, but that's what I should do. I should, in, in all honesty, if I wanted to, you know, really come back and, and uh, you know, uh, increase my position, I should buy XRP right now because if I bought it at, let's say $3, and then it goes on to 20 cents, well, if I buy a bunch of it at 20 cents, now my average cost isn't $3. My average cost is somewhere in like the dollar range, if I buy enough of, the, of this 20 cents. So um, let's say I have 1,000 at, uh, at, at $3, right? So let me do some quick math here. Three times 1,000, 3,000. Okay, so I got 3,000, and then I buy a bunch at like 20 cents. Let's say I buy, thousand dollars worth of 20 cents well now my average cost is going to go down and when xrp starts to actually get up to like that dollar twenty dollar thirty dollar eighty range or whatever it is uh, i can actually sell for a profit so if you think about it like that i mean you can dollar cost average in right now because everything is going down now here's the the problem with that the problem with that is your own mentality is everybody's mentality actually that um even, even my even myself like even i look at things and i'm like should I really buy into that? And it's this, there's this part of our reptilian brain that's a, you know, fight or flight. And we look at things that are going down. And of course we just think to ourselves, 
I don't need, I don't want to be there because that is a loser position. That's not what I should do. But it takes a lot of time and it doesn't just happen like that. It's, it's not like pro athletes, you know, I mean, some pro athletes just become, they just are fantastic and they are, you know, like just built for, for uh, that professional level. Uh, and, and most of them, 99%, they have to train and train and train. It's the same thing with looking at a position that's going short and saying to yourself, or not positions going short, but uh, positions that are going down in price and going, you know what, I need to buy there. I need to buy there. I need to buy there. I need to buy all the way down here because that's the best opportunity. So if you're a little bit right now on the, on the, the sidelines, um, and, and even myself, I take a look at things and I'm like, should I really buy that stuff right now? And you just have to remember, where is this market actually going? Do you think it's going to go away? Do you think this is a flash in the pan? If you do, I'm gonna tell, I'll, I'll tell you advice. You should get out right now because it's going to get even more rocky. There's going to be even more violent swings. It's going to go up massively and it's going to go down massively. So if you don't really believe where things are going, it's time to hightail it. Grab some bench and get the hell out because there's no reason for really for you to be here. However, if you've been around a long uh, enough time or you just believe that this technology is going to take over and it's going to swallow the internet whole like Alex Mashinsky talks about, then this is the perfect time. This is the perfect time for you and me to buy up these assets because it is a fire sale. And people always talked about it. I remember back in 2017, 2018, it used to piss me off so bad when people would say, oh, it's a fire sale, it's a fire sale. I'm like, are we looking at the same thing? I just lost a ton of money. And the reason why I thought that way is because I dumped so much money at once and I didn't dollar cost average. Now I totally get it because I've been dollar cost averaging into everything that I've ever done and I'm, I'm up. So when you're up, you have that ability just to go, let's do this. Let's get this done. I know what I'm doing. That's it. So that's really all I got to say. So uh, tell me what you think about in the comments section below. Let's jump back. All right. So that's what I see. So what's going on in the greater cryptocurrency space? Well, uh, this was a story from Daily Hodl, strategist who called Bitcoin's biggest crash, says he just exited crypto market. And this is all about Peter Brandt. I know if you are an XRP holder, you hate this guy because he always trashes XRP. And um, I mean, look, he's been around for quite some time. He knows what he's doing. He's an excellent trader and I won't take that away from him. However, once he once we learn what he says, I'm going to uh, rebuke some of the things he talks about and I'll explain it a bit. Anyhow, Peter Brandt of the global trading firm Factor LLC says he's selling most of his portfolio in stocks, the foreign exchange market and Bitcoin to move into the US dollar. And this was a question that he, he got from in Twitter from Crypto J, who was just asking about like what he really does. And Peter's like, I don't understand, but I'm just gonna tell you this. Personally, I exited, exited almost all of my portfolio in the last two days stocks, Forex, Bitcoin. So in a process, moved assets back into home currency, USD. And the reason is he thinks the US market bubble is in, is in its final stage right before it pops. He states, this is what I believe about the US market. Fight the Fed at your own doom. Getting bearish too early can wipe you out. Market and final blow off the 12 year bull market. Bubbles can expand further than anyone expects possible, then burst tragically. Great profits in final push. And that's what a lot of the different analysts have talked about lately about how this whole bull run is going to end and everything's going to collapse in a tragic fashion. But there's one thing about Peter Brandt that people have to remember is that he will always change his position depending on the information that he gets. And he freely admits that. So tomorrow, some piece of data could come out that could totally reverse his whole decision. And he's done that for other different times. I remember in March where he pretty much said that Bitcoin was going to go to almost a zero. And he's always said Bitcoin's going to go to 100,000 or almost a zero. And I asked him, I, I sent him a tweet. I go, and this was you know back in March. And, he, and he's like, yeah, I think it's going to go the other way. I think it's going to go very far. And when I hear these things, and when you hear these articles, you think to yourself, oh, this guy is totally getting out. He's never going to come back. And that's his position. So I need to make it very crystal clear. Peter is a trader, a very good trader. And what he's going to do is listen to all the information, look at all the data, all the analytics, and he's going to make a decision. Could this totally 180 tomorrow? Probably not. But uh, could it happen in the next week, two weeks, three weeks? Yeah, definitely could. And uh, like I said, Peter is the guy who will totally tell you, what do you do when you get new information? You change your position. 
So when I see these types of articles, I'm not really that concerned. It is sensationalism and it is fantastic. And it kind of leads us in, into you know a little bit more of a cautious state. But you have to understand, just take it with a grain of salt. Are you a trader or are you an investor like we just talked about in Q of the day? That is the big thing. Where do you think this market is going? Honestly, if you think it's going to go to the moon, just hang around. Things will change. And if you're talking about traders, like this is another article that I, I pulled up from Market Watch, and the same type of thing. They're saying, you know what, uh, it's going to get bad, but just ride these two uh, winners, and you should be okay. And this is from uh, Jeffrey Haley, the senior market analyst at uh, Oanda, uh, Asia Pacific, and he says investors should just focus on Apple and Microsoft. For Apple, all the service service business has been a rock of. Gibraltar for CEO Tim Tim Cook. Now the drum roll shifts to a massive pen at the man for smartphone upgrades. Heading into its iPhone 12 5G super cycle, slightest so cycle off. And he just talks about how great things are. I, I don't want to bore you. But so it it all depends on the different analysts that you listen to and what's going to happen. Do I think that things are going to uh, turn rocky? Absolutely. We talked about this yesterday as one of the indicators, uh, trillion dollars in housing bonds bought up by the Fed. And not only that, but the Fed is the biggest buyer of securities right now. So they hold everything and they're just printing money and it doesn't really matter. So we'll well, it does matter, let's be honest. So we will see how it all plays out. But uh, again, do I think things will get rocky? Yes. Do I think that cryptocurrencies and digital assets are here to stay? Absolutely. Do I think they will swallow up everything? You betcha. But uh, sometimes you got to go through a little, little bit of pain to get to the pleasure. Next up, oh, how times have changed. So Tim Draper just put out a tweet today, 10 a.m., and he talks about, hey, I recently purchased some Bitcoin cash. So easy to buy and use. Go to Bitcoin.com. Thank you at Roger Veer Cash for this innovation. Hashtag Bitcoin. Hashtag Bitcoin Cash. And I got to tell you, Tim Draper has been an OG maximalist. I mean, uh, a Bitcoin guy for the quite quite a long time. I, actually, I shouldn't say that. He, he's not a Bitcoin maximalist because he talks about a lot of different other altcoins. But he was one of the first that really got into Bitcoin. And I, and, uh, I think it was 2013, 2014, when he bought up millions of dollars worth of seized Bitcoin from the U.S. government. And he bought it for like next to nothing. And now just another... Just another billion dollar pocket change that uh, Tim's got. But uh, I do like this guy. I mean, I, I think he's got a lot of uh, information in there. So when he comes out and says, hey, Bitcoin Cash is so easy to buy and use, it's um, a little, it just leaves a lot of questions. We'll just say that. So does Tim believe that Bitcoin Cash uh, is really easy to use and buy? Eh, probably. I mean, right now, I got to tell you, it's uh, it's a hell of a lot faster than Ethereum. I'm gonna tell you why. So I've been talking about this website called TXStreet.com, and it's like a nice little graphical representation of all the different transactions that are going on. And you can look at Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Bitcoin Cash. So right now, uh, the medium fee is only 464. So thank goodness for that. Hopefully, OMG is taking over a little bit more. But you're gonna see like all the different things like Tether, Uniswap, Maker, Kyber Network, Curve. Zero uh, X, all compound, all the different ones that are different transactions for really DeFi and what is going on. So there's a lot of transactions going on right here, a lot of activity. So we take a look at that. We'll take a look at Bitcoin. And with Bitcoin, you know, it's every 10 minutes a transaction happens. So look at that station. It must be just about now. So wow, it's a lot going on. And then we take a look at Bitcoin Cash. Ah, <sighs> cue the violin music. So yeah, that's a sad state of affairs. What are you gonna do? So yeah, I believe you, Draper. I believe that, uh, what's this? Two years ago, I posted that dinner problem hadn't been solved. We had Wednesday of trust. Wow, that was interesting. I've never seen that before. So anyhow, uh, Draper, uh, you're right. It's super fast and super easy because there's nothing really going on. However, don't let yourself just sleep just yet because there is going to be a hard fork coming about between Bitcoin Cash and the two different factions that have appeared. On one side of Bitcoin Cash, they think that there should be an 8% fee, which will be charged to all the miners, which will be put back into uh, the project itself to help it grow. And on another side, uh, I think it's AABH, I always forget it. Uh, correct me Correct me in the, in the comment section. I know I'm not right this on this one, but another one, I forgot the name. They're like, no, 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 we're not going to charge anybody 8%. You know, forget you. Uh, we're not going to have this. And it's become such a thing that they're going to split off and it's going to be a hard fork. So uh, we'll see how that happens. You know what I need to do? I need to get somebody from Bitcoin Cash to come on this channel and explain it all to me because that would be interesting. But uh, Draper, you're right. Super easy to uh, use because there's nothing really going on. One thing I will say about Tim Draper, uh, he knows how to make an entrance and know how, knows how to put out a nice, juicy tweet. However, I don't think he's really good at tagging the right people. 
Uh, thank you at Roger Verkash is not Roger Veer. It is a retired doctor and current philanthropist, pilot in training, born and reside in Florida, and escaped to Australia during winter. Don't think that's Roger Ver. So anyhow, it's okay, Tim. My Twitter game is weak as well. And last up, brutal blow to miners. Russia's new law will ban crypto completely and prohibit miners from receiving rewards. This is a very twisted comment or title for a story. I'm going to tell you why. So according to September 3rd report by local media outlet Izvestia, Russia's Ministry of Finance has submitted a new draft for interdepartmental approval, which will make it unlawful to receive crypto such as Bitcoin and Ethereum as a reward for verifying transactions on the blockchain networks. Crypto mining activities in Russia will not be deemed illegal. However, receiving minor rewards would be forbidden. So you can still get paid and you can still do it. You just can't get paid in cryptocurrency, which that's strange, but whatever. Russia's Russia. The bill, however, mentions three unique scenarios in which Russians would be allowed to receive digital currencies. Inheritance, a uh, receipt of crypto and a bankruptcy, and as compensation after winning a legal proceeding. So again, Russia's Russia. I don't understand why they're like, well, you know what? Screw you, miners. But if you get, if you go through the courts and you uh, win a legal proceeding or uh, some kind of bankruptcy, <laughs> no problem. I don't get it, but uh, whatever. Any other transaction involving cryptocurrency would be seen as an offense punishable by law. In particular, Russian citizen found transacting in crypto will be fined 100,000 rubles, which is about 1,300 bucks, and serve a seven-year jail term. And they're not playing around. Legal entities may be slapped with a fine of approximately 1 million rubles, which is around 13 grand. But uh, wow, seven-year jail term. That's kind of crazy. And lastly, it says, unlike other countries across the globe, like China, that are already developing their own digital currencies, Russia's central bank is not too keen on issuing its own national digital currency in the near future. And I believe that part because in parliament from Russia, from what I understand, there's corruption going on. Hot news flash, which happens in every government. Hot news flash again. But um, these central banks, they seem to play a pivotal role in Russia, just like central banks play you know, a pivotal role in, in America and other, other places. Let's, let's, not, let's call a spade a spade. But I think more so here. And there is like this dynamic between Putin and parliament and the central bankers. And uh, I got to tell you, I put my money on Putin. I'm just telling you. But I will say this, Russia and China are trying to get away from the US dollar. So I think the easiest way to do that, or the most complete way, would probably to make their own CBDC and then start to a transaction with all the different other countries, such as China and the European Union. I don't know why they wouldn't create their own CBDC, especially if you could transport everything around as easy as it is. I just don't understand why they wouldn't want to do that unless the central banks are fearful of losing power. Ding, ding, ding. That could be it. But who knows? Let me know what you think in the comments section. And that's it for today's video. So uh, lastly, I just want to say that there is a join now button underneath. If you want to join, you don't get anything special. That's just like a buck ninety nine, like a tip. And I just do random shout outs. So random shout outs for the day. Doug Lemley, Melissa Davis. Who else we got? I'm going to try this one. Harvohe Sowich. I think I nailed it. William Howell. Uh, where are we? Johnny Bitcoin. Uh, Jimmy G and Barry Belasco. So thanks for everybody who signed up. I really appreciate it. If you like those two types of videos, there's gonna, or those two types of videos, those type, these types of videos, I mean, two is gonna show up on your left and right. Go ahead and check them out. And uh, that is it for today. Really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next one.